everyone, you are watching The Chrissy B Show. Now, it doesn't take much these days to make someone feel low and uncertain about the future. So we'll be covering a few things on the show today to help you out. If you have a business that's not going so well and it's stressing you out, we have business mentor Jonathan Farr with us to give us his rundown on the key items businesses need to grow successfully. And something else that can make a person very anxious is change, but sometimes change is exactly what we need. So we also have coach Chris Brown with us talking about how we can eliminate our fear of change so we can embrace all that life has to offer. Plus, I'll be answering a question from a viewer. And we also have Wine Sola here, and she's going to be sharing her real life story on her own life struggles and how perseverance has led her onto the road to success. And we'll also be watching how the home has changed over time with a visit to the Jeffrey Museum of the Home. But first, we have the news with Ian and Helena. Hiya, Hello. how are you today? I'm well, how are you both? We're, we're good, well. we're bouncing. We've well, we well. had our chocolate boost. Yeah. You're not eating chocolate. I'm not eating chocolate. Yes, yeah, see. Says you it every week. week. <laughs> you forgot, you forgot. Um, so somewhere that I would like to be, and I'm sure lots of other people would like to be, is the island of Mustique which is where all the royals go. So the Middletons have jetted off there for a break for mm -hmm. Carol Middleton's 60th birthday party. Oh. So Duchess... How long is this party going on for? I don't know. It's quite a <laughs> scene. <laughs> yeah. It's a one-day event there, but it must, it's so beautiful. Not that I've been. What I, do they I do normally want then, to. Like? Well, they just have a lovely time. <laughs> they actually stay in a villa and everything, but they have everything made for them. Their food and so it's just beautiful. And, yeah. and if you remember, it's, in that, it's that same area where everything costs so much. Just to have a sushi meal is $150. Yeah. So, but Prince you know. George, and everybody's there, so it's lovely. But the pap paparazzi is not allowed on the island, so I think it appeals to lots of people. Okay. It yeah. sounds like, um, what's his face? Richard Branson's island, yes. isn't it? Absolutely. Yeah. So but, that sounds, um, yeah, so that's just, good fun. And Pippa oh. Middleton, bless yes. her heart, has, has won a wine award. That's rather hard to say <laughs> <laughs> on a Wednesday night. <laughs> <laughs> a wine award. Um, and she's been just to be one of the sort of the top wine experts in, in this particular year, um, mm. for, especially for sort of different quality of wines. And she's won this £1,500 prize, bless her heart. But it is actually of, of wine, I think. It is of wine. Well, and, 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 well. and she actually sort of judges wines and, and, and she's tested on by Sonne Lumiers. Is it Sonne Lumiers or Sonne Lumiers? I, you know, I can never pronounce the words. It's wine experts, but I mean, I think she can now be a is it sommelier. Have I, I said no, that sommelier. right? That's no, the word. Think That's so. the word. Sonne yeah. Lumiers is, is the light, isn't it? A wine expert. <laughs> I've seen okay. the light. Yeah. So uh, that's nice. Um, so Rihanna has won her legal battle. Mm -hmm. um, there was a, a top shop basically printed a T-shirt with her face on it. Um, That's and quite naughty, isn't it? Like, it really? is. It's really. Oh, well, thinking. And you know, she had to really fight for it mm. because she didn't win to begin with. But um, obviously, they're passing off. You know, they, they shouldn't have done that at all. And I'm always very interested in the, the, well, the well, legal you see, side you of it. You always see, like for example, if you go down Oxford Street, these stores, and they have all these sort of celebrity t-shirts and but stuff obviously they're not going to go after those little but they, they I do i can't imagine do, but the thing is is that if she'd have agreed to it it would have been fine but she suddenly realized they were stocking and she's her own brand mm. so if everyone does that she obviously yeah, isn't yeah. going to be it wasn't yeah. a very nice picture of her either i think i would have been more pissed off with that <laughs> but, um, okay there and you there's are. this uh, interesting story about prince william this week uh, by charles spencer uh, the uncle uh, and obviously um what he's really inferring, he's, he's written a book, he's in America, he's promoting his book at the moment, so he needed a bit of controversy mm -hmm. uh, in the book. So he's sort of saying that William is doing a very good job for the monarchy, uh, leaving the question, what is Charles doing? <laughs> um, and, and so, you know, there was this, the, the eulogy at, at the funeral at the time was that uh, he would make sure that the boys stayed within the sort of the Spencer remit of, you know, positive, you know, futures. Uh, so there's always been this tremendous rift between Charles Spencer uh, and, and Charles, Prince Charles. Mm -hmm. um, so, it's, it's, um, so he's now sort of created the, a bit more furor, almost by suggesting that perhaps, you know, it, he may skip a generation or Britain might skip a generation. And go straight to William. And yeah. go straight William. to William. Mm, who knows? So watch this space. I, te <laughs> I tell you, there's Prince warfare. Charles, <laughs> Prince Charles is more old school and obviously Prince William is more modern than people relate to him more. Yeah, so there's a little yeah. bit of truth in some sense. Yeah. If you don't see the oh, right wow, responsibility. Yeah. So um, Jewelers Robinson Pelham. Any 
Any, any link to there, there you, could be. There could be. <laughs> anyway, there could um, be. Th they are the jewellers that made the earrings for the Duchess of Cornwall on her wedding day. Mm -hmm. um, and they've discovered, well, they say that um, diamonds and gold and very special designer jewellery is up by 30%, or well, more than 30%. And there's lots of women that seem to have money that have come in in January and spent a fortune on their, on their jewellery, uh, far more than par previous years. Why is that? So mean? obviously there's very lucky people. I would imagine they're more businessy women who mm. have that excess money and maybe want to spend money and put it into gold and things like that. I mean, it'd be lovely yeah. to do. I'd like to be able to find uh, that and get <laughs> a few nice little bits and pieces. They're quite interesting. Yeah, I was watching a show last night. I can't remember what it was called. Was it people flash that flash their money around and stuff, and there's just people going oh, into I these shops? That. Did you see it? Yeah. Uh, these women just buying like how many dresses did she pounds. buy? She had she goes to a part, like three parties a week. I can't remember. She's like an ex uh, wag. Yeah. And yeah. um, she, yeah, three parties a week she goes to sort of keep up appearances she has and to stuff. Buy three she, but she buys like three dresses, and they're like two grand or something each. Absolutely. And, 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 and a handbag. And she didn't know? even ask how much the handbag no, was. No. No. Uh, that's that's something. <laughs> Can you, you imagine? Know? And it's, it's actually it's her actually. husband. She's got her own money, but she sort of her husband comes from her husband and stuff. So there, there's a there's a there's a street in Wembley that is probably the most forget Knightsbridge. It's probably the most expensive street in Britain for for jewellery. Mm. It's Asian gold, which is a much oh, uh, richer quality, gold. Yeah. Um, and and there's one place that's the size probably of you know the, the ground floor of Harrods. It's massive, and it has about four items in it. Arm guards the full thing, and you have to sort of make an appointment just even to come oh, and wow. see these four bits. But they're <laughs> worth a fortune. Mm -hmm. You know, on, on sort of some of these things. One now, a places. story for mm. our South American viewers. This, yeah. this, <laughs> this week, well. this was quite a fun one where um, Paul McCartney, Sir Paul McCartney, strict vegetarian, has been for many, many years now. Uh, and someone, uh, one of his friends was in Argentina and discovered that there was a, a gentleman in Argentina who was using Paul McCartney's name above his butcher's shop. <laughs> He's a, he's a super fan, obviously yeah. Paul McCartney's vegetarian, super. it's completely madness. <laughs> right above his butcher's McCartney. shop. Oh dear. <laughs> so, 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 he, so he sent them the photograph and uh, for Paul McCartney. Paul McCartney thought he saw the funny side of it. You know. <laughs> yeah, that's quite funny. Yeah, yeah. 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 Yeah.
who's been trying to find a boyfriend for 10 years. This lady is called April Brooker. And the reason why she's struggled to sort of find a, a boyfriend in her life is that her, her job and her collection, is she's got a puppet collection, she's a ventriloquist. Oh. And the whole that, flat is filled. Oh my God, that was scary. Sorry, that, that was scary. You know it, it's, actually, it's actually a little bit more, it, it's, a, it's a strange addic addiction that she's got, that she has to, because it's more, a little bit more than just being a ventriloquist. She has, to, she has to take one of her puppets out with oh, her everywhere weird. she goes. That's very weird. But it is a strange <laughs> addiction. There is a sort of thing. I mean, We're going to have to leave I, I, it there. I don't. I don't. Just quickly, can I just say one we'll, other one? We've run out of, oh, okay. run out of time. <laughs> Thank you so much. Yeah, but I, d I don't like dollies and things like Those that. Dolls things, and yeah, yeah. They're, they're a bit creepy for me. I like teddy bears. Thank you so much. No we'll see yeah. you again next time. <laughs> Alrighty, so do stay tuned because after the break, we'll have our business expert, Jonathan Fall, who'll be going back to basics with the main criteria needed for businesses to grow successfully. Don't forget to subscribe to The Chrissy B Show. Always aiming to show you the happier side of life. You can find us on YouTube, Facebook and Twitter. Welcome back everyone. Now before we go to Jonathan Fall with some business advice, let's go to Fitness Tip with Jane Rafter. Hi everyone, it's Jane here. Welcome to your fitness tips. Um, I'm going to help some of you decide what type of exercise you ought to do because a lot of people know they need to get fit and this might apply to you, okay? You might know you want to get fit but you're not really sure um, what class to go to or what activity to take up. So what you need to do is analyse your weaknesses and try and attack those because people tend to say, well I can't do yoga because I'm not bendy enough. And that's actually backwards thinking. What you should think is, look, I'm really needing to be more flexible. I'm really tight. I've got tight backs of the legs. I'm tight in the back. So I need to go to yoga because yoga will help you develop your flexibility and increase your range of movement as well. If you're stressed and you're looking to de-stress, I also recommend yoga for that. It's very good for relaxation. If you want to improve your heart and lungs, your cardiovascular, stamina then you need to do an exercise that's going to raise your heart rate so that could be walking swimming cycling running if you want to go to a class try something like zumba maybe if you like dancing or a circuit class if you're not really into dancing if you if you ask around um, either in the gyms or community classes you should find the class that you want if you get back pain and you need to tone up and strengthen your core I would recommend Pilates. It's really, really good. It's the gold standard exercise. You'll really target here. You'll improve posture and improve um, back pain. So have a think about what it is that you want to achieve and then try and get to the right class. All right, so good luck with your research and go and get fit. back and we do have Jonathan Farr with us to help those who already have a business and maybe are having a little bit of trouble or who would like to know how to grow their business even more. Hi Jonathan. Hi, how are you Chrissy? I'm very well, lovely to see you again. Good to see you too. Good to Alrighty, see you. so I know, okay, there are a lot of people that have started businesses. Some, for some it's going really well, for others it's becoming really stressful, maybe they're feeling a bit low about things that are going wrong, so we'd love some advice from you. Certainly. to help people that have a business already. Absolutely, So with, and it happens with all businesses at different stages of their life. Um, I've had my company now for seven years, and there are now six companies within the group. My oldest company is seven years. It's never yeah. smooth sailing. You know, you go through ups and you go through downs. Can you just quickly cover what you do, just in case we've got some new viewers today? And they... Sure, sure. Well, uh, I own the Rockstar Group of Companies, and we are a mentoring and investment organisation. So we help companies grow through giving them not just advice and expert uh, uh, people who have already achieved what they've got. Mm. We have our own investment fund and we have our rock star hub where businesses can actually run their businesses under the same roof as us with that constant support Which and capital. Great. It's wonderful. Okay, so back to the, the businesses now. What, what mm. advice would you give to? The key thing is to know always to be able to adapt. You know, mm. we live in an age now of technology which is so rapidly changing. There are different ways to always be able to attract new customers. And usually, if people are feeling low about business, mm -hmm. 
Traditionally, it's because the business isn't going very well. And by that, that means that sales are flat or uh, costs have gone up, margins are being squeezed, so the business isn't as profitable. Mm -hmm. uh, so the, the key thing to do that, so the faster way to overcome that is to be more, become, more, become more profitable. The way you become more profitable is you're either increasing sales or you're looking at different ways to reduce your costs mm -hmm. so that your margins come up. How do okay. you do that is to always keep it up to trend of what the market is adapting, what your sector is, is, is becoming, mm -hmm. and be able to be flexible as to how you can adapt in order to generate more sales or to reduce your costs. Very important. Okay. And if, uh, for example, someone is kind of has the potential to be doing really well and having lots of sales, but at the moment they're not kind of managing with what they have and they can't employ other people at the moment, what, what would your advice be for them? Well, often you find, um, and that's a really, really good question, because there comes a point in time where, do I now take on the cost of a full-time employee, yeah. which is going to involve not just their salary, but all the tax and national insurance I have to pay? Because mm -hmm. right now, everything's going really well, but is it going to be the same next month or next quarter or next, uh, next year? So when companies start to see sales going up and they need the assistance, yeah. there are some fantastic ways that you can bring in more people, but you don't have to start with a PAYE full-time employee. Okay. You can give people the opportunity to start as an intern or oh, as an apprentice okay. or as a consultant. Mm -hmm. So all of those three different areas, they are still achieving your goal of having people come into your team to either help with sales or what I suggest to businesses, you are, no one can sell your product or service better than you mm -hmm. when you're a growing business. You yeah. are your brand and you know how to sell it better than anyone. Yeah. So you've, the, the first person that you should always bring into your team is someone who can take away all the administrative or <laughs> yeah. all of the operational stuff mm -hmm. that is taking up half or 50 or 70% of your time yeah. and allow them to do it, which gives you the time to focus on generating more sales. Mm -hmm. And what would, what would be in it for them, apart from sort of maybe the experience and stuff, if obviously if they're not getting paid they yet, so, but some of them would. Oh, you said, absolutely. Like, well, okay. Absolutely. So you've got, with, um, with uh, uh, apprentices, you pay. Okay. There's a, you, you, but you they're do not, pay them. you don't have to pay uh, taxes and stuff, is it, for them? I mean, the, the pay... The new, yeah. the, 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 the current uh, uh, government program about... Uh, encouraging businesses to do more apprentices mm -hmm. is that the the fees and the costs that are uh, that come with bringing apprentices on a lot of that is subsidized by the government okay cool sorry guys i'm asking the obvious questions i really don't know because i don't have a business so this is why i'm getting everything from jonathan now okay go but for me yeah. i've always done it with with consultants so okay. that's how i always start it yeah. so we've got a new business that's just come through we need people on in the company that mm -hmm. are going to help with those tasks or those sides of things you yeah. start as th they are a consultant and they are paid without okay. question. Mm -hmm. But what that means is if it's not working out or it gives you the opportunity to try them out first mm -hmm. without having to go down the long term, you know, and, and, and what you have to keep in mind as a business owner under PAYE. Okay. Oh, okay. okay. So what about um, some, some of your top tips? Like, because obviously there are people that maybe have just started a business and they, they're kind of not sure now how to start expanding it and stuff. But what are some, maybe some of the common mistakes people make when they first start out? Absolutely. Well, when, when, when you already have a business and you're growing, mm -hmm. What tends to happen is you have what's called the glass, the glass ceiling effect. Mm -hmm. And that means everything's going great, everything's been fantastic, and this happens to clients and businesses of ours all the time. And all of a sudden something stops. They're not slowing down, but they just can't get through to that mm -hmm. next level of growth. Okay. And so what always happens, and it's, this, it's a common mistake by a lot of business owners, is they wonder, Everything was going so well, but now I'm not being able to get past this level. I've brought in people, I'm doing this, etc. Mm -hmm. But I've invested in this marketing. But why isn't we? Why aren't we achieving more sales? Why aren't we growing? Mm -hmm. And the the common mistake is the reason why the business had such an amazing growth curve over the last six, twelve, two years, twelve months or two years is because the managing director, what they were doing in that time, the business owner is completely different to what their job has now been. So the key tip is to always be focusing on the business. As the owner, as the managing director, you want to get to the stage where you are always spending your time working on the business 
rather than in the business. So you're getting sidetracked with other things like with the admin and stuff that you, you were talking about. Absolutely. It's about finding the right people cost effectively that, or the right um, companies or mm. the right software. It doesn't have to be physical human beings who are coming to That's your true. office each day. Yeah. You can leverage off CRM systems, which is customer uh, relationship management platforms. Mm -hmm. They manage, it's, it's a piece of software, it's a computer but yeah. they manage all of the correspondence that you can do for your customers. There are so many great ways you can leverage off technology to allow you as a business owner to work on the business, mm -hmm. which means growing it rather than spending your time day to day working okay. in the business. Apart from obviously uh, researching on the internet, is there any, are there any other sort of ways that you can find out about all these resources for, for businesses? Absolutely. I mean, there are a number of different platforms and ways you can do it. The, mm -hmm. I mean, in my opinion, the fastest way to learn how to do it is to, is to work with someone or at least listen and spend time with someone who has already achieved it. Right. Okay. So finding a good mentor mm -hmm. or to attend the right type of business networking events that you can attend and learn different topics mm -hmm. about marketing, about operations, about uh, how to improve your margins or leveraging off technology. Okay, so you, obviously you are, your business is about mentoring. Mm. What other benefits are there to having a business mentor? Well, the biggest thing is contacts. Right. Because everyone has questions. And what makes our mentors special is on average, they have all started, built up and sold a company for an average price of 18 million pounds. Wow. So they're big names. And mm. when you go on the website, you see people that you recognize. Yeah. And that list is continuing to get bigger and, okay. and, and, and more famous, which is great. Mm -hmm. um, but it's great to be able to bounce ideas and ask questions about the problems you have. Mm -hmm. But there's an age old saying in business, it's not what you know, it's who you know. Yeah. And when you spend time with someone who has sold a company for a large amount in your industry mm -hmm. and they're no longer a competitor and they're wanting to help you grow to potentially That's also great. invest in you, their black books are extensive. They're yours. So, and they're ours. <laughs> yeah. So that's the biggest thing. If you can build a great relationship with us as mentors mm -hmm. and show us that you are absolutely keen to grow and be successful, mm -hmm. then we're always more than happy to open up the black book because that personal introduction about what your product or service right. is to someone is obviously, wow. it fast tracks your sales a lot, a lot faster, yeah. Definitely, sounds fantastic. Jonathan, thank you so much. Always a pleasure, good and to we'll see, see you again, again soon. Cheers, thanks. Alrighty, so that's great advice from Jonathan Fowler, as usual. Okay, so we're gonna be back after this break with our self-development development coach, Chris Brown, who'll be helping us overcome the fear of change, and I'll also be answering a question from a viewer. Don't forget to subscribe to The Chrissy B Show, always aiming to show you the happier side of life. You can find us on YouTube, Facebook, and Twitter. Hello everyone, and now I'm with Coach Chris Brown. Hi, Chrissy. Hello. We're going to be talking about change, aren't we? We are going to be talking about change. But let's just help this viewer who's in a little bit of a pickle. Okay. Alrighty, so this one, there's no name, but you'll understand why in a minute. Hi, Chrissy. I got involved with a man a few months ago and I've really fallen for him in a big way. But I found out recently from someone I know that he's married. When I confronted him, he said, although they live under the same roof, he assures me they sleep in separate rooms and they are planning to get divorced. I really don't think he's lying to me, but I feel very uneasy about the whole situation. What do I do? Okay, sweetheart, I'm going to be very frank with you. Run for your life. All right, that's what I'm going to say to you because these kind of situations, they never work out. The fact is, first of all, he's lied to you. If really they were going to get divorced and stuff and they were not together anymore, he would have told you at the beginning of the relationship. The fact that he, you found out is a really, really bad <coughs> sign. And also, um, I actually know people that were in this situation. I know two people that were in this situation and the guy had them basically strung along, strung along for years. So they kept saying, oh, we're not together. We're going to get divorced. And then in the end, it was like years. And then they ended up breaking these two women's hearts. So I would say it's, it's not a good situation to be in. I know you say you've fallen for him big time, but honestly, it's going to hurt a bit now. If you break up with him now, it's going to hurt, yes. But you're going to hurt much more if you stay in this relationship. I'm being very blunt. Normally, I kind of like give two sides of the thing because I like to kind of try and stay neutral and give, you know, practical advice to everyone. But in this situation, I feel very strongly about it. So I would say, you know, break up with him. 
If, for example, then you find out later he has indeed been divorced, he, he was serious and then he wants to come, you know, to talk to you again, that's another matter. But at least he's already on his own. But at the moment, darling, he belongs to someone else. So I wouldn't even go there. And there are plenty of single men that would love a woman like you, I'm sure. OK, I don't know if you'd like to add anything. Yeah, I'll add to that. Um, let's put it this way. I mean, completely right. I'm in agreement with you. Mm -hmm. Each way, each three of them, nothing good is going to come of it at the end of the day. Let's just yeah. say that he does get divorced and they go off together. Mm -hmm. They will always be looking back. It will never grow. Nothing's yeah, yeah. gonna come of it. So forget it, move mm. on, you know? Like she, deserves, she deserves better at the end of the of day. Of course, of course. And the fact is, if, if really the relationship is over, why aren't they already in separate houses or divorced already? Well, if, he's always if, it's, say if the situation is already fit, done yeah. and I mean, there's no mention of kids or anything here, but if the situation is all done and dusted, they will already be separated in separate exactly. houses and he would have been honest with her at the beginning. Bit of both worlds, that's yeah, what I say. So. Not making a judgment here, bit of both worlds, you don't want to be a part of it. Move on. Definitely. Move on. All right, I hope that's helped. And if you guys have a question at home, you can email me on chris at chrissybshow.tv. So let's talk about change. Interesting. Yes. Talking about change. Um, change, we're talking about the many different areas of change, right? Now, the thing is, I actually like change. And sometimes, I, I admit, sometimes I don't, you know, but yeah. I have to actually get used to it and think, well, is this going to turn out good for me or what? Hey, let's take a risk instead and see what's going to yeah. come of this change. Now, many people like change, some people don't like change. Should I say that the other way around? Many people don't like change, some mm -hmm. people do. And when I say that, meaning that there is a fear of change. So we're going to talk about the fear of change and actually things we should do. But when we talk about change, let's start off straight away. What is change? Yeah, what is change? Change is different to many individuals in different ways. Okay. Now, change, we could be talking about um, change of circumstance, change in your health, change in energy. We, it could have a really wide umbrella and say, look, we're talking about change. But mm -hmm. what I'm going to say here is there are many different changes. There's behavioural change, which is one of actually making a conscious decision to change your behaviours, mm -hmm. right? The reason why you do that is to get a better result. That's your aim at the end of the day. You want a better result, so I've got to change the situation mm -hmm. that I'm in. Hey, we were just talking about relationships. We've got to change that, you know? Yeah. So we've got to talk about um, our ways, the way we communicate, um, our business, different areas. We've got to change, yeah. right? Now, there are some people feel, I don't want to change. I don't know what's out there. Imagine this, you go into a company um, and you've got great ideas and you're speaking to them about it and they turn around and say, no, we don't want to do this. We've always done it this way and we intend to always do it this way. Trust me, there's a lot of fear going on there mm. at the end of the day. Nobody wants to take a risk. They're comfortable as they are, but watch out if you're a company like that because everybody else is changing. So yeah. you've got to go with it one way or another, sooner or later. Just got to make out... It's a bit of laziness as well. There like, is the, laziness, sort of, yeah. It takes a lot to kind of do something, especially in business, to do something in a different way and you have to change a lot of things and That's it, it means costs as well. That's it, comfort zone. Yeah. Comfort mm. zone, you know, but you're going to have to one way or another, you know. That's the other thing. Change or fail, basically, isn't it? Change or fail. You just mm -hmm. said it. Now, in saying that as well, let's talk about the actual effects of change. Because sometimes we don't want to change, but we only change when it actually affects us personally. Now, I mentioned three areas. I talked about energy. I said, um, what was the other one? Education. Right? All right. Let's just talk about the first one, energy. Could you remember way back before when you say um, climate change? that sort of thing mm -hmm. and what you've got to do and what and when you put out your recycling stuff yeah. and everything what you do and something oh forget that it's not doing anything oh leave it and at the end of the day hey listen we're actually feeling the facts of it today mm. you know i was looking up some facts and i remember this whole thing about in antarctica where all the slabs of ice are melting big sheets of ice so when this melts the sea level goes up to about four was it four four feet or something like that yeah mm -hmm. now think about this it has a ripple effect all around the world so now we're in this position where we've got um, freak weather in different places. Yeah. Freak weather in it's different true. places. Mm -hmm. Hot country's got snow, you know, and you've got like, you know, like now, different seasons we've got. And when you actually start to realise that, watch it, everybody starts doing the recycling, saying, <laughs> hey, I better put this right there. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. So that's one sort of change we're talking about. Uh, jumping on very quickly, um, education. We talked about this many times. The way teachers taught before, and the way they teach now, learn about method teaching to an individual to actually receive that and grow. Mm -hmm. Whereas before it was more blanket teaching. We've got better understanding. So there had to be a change to go with yeah. that. And everybody's actually benefiting from that. The other one is health. 
I'll throw this one up, put myself on the line here. It's up to you, whether you smoke or not smoke. It's up to an individual, right? Now, think about this. You're spending all that money all the time, right? And you realise you're pretty broke, but you've still got to do this because there's this change in habit that we've got to embrace. Not until something actually happens health-wise do you start re-evaluating and thinking, well, hang on, this is actually not doing me any good uh, financially, it's not good enough for my health, not good enough good for my family or anything, uh, it's affecting me. I've got to change my habits and change my ways. So three areas of change, but each one of them will affect us personally, one way or another. Now, I mentioned that last one there of health. That goes bigger, it goes right across the board. You know, you're lying there in a hospital bed, I've been there, you're lying in a hospital bed, looking up and you're thinking, and you think, you know what, I've got to change. You know, I've got to do something about it, so I'm not in this position anymore. Why should we have to wait till these things happen? That's the thing, and to be honest, you might not even get that opportunity. Exactly. Well, exactly. you don't make it yeah. because of the changes that you haven't made earlier. And you start living regrets, saying, mm. I wish I had. I wish I did make you that change. You wish to I make to have regrets. <laughs> well, yeah, yeah, well, afterwards. Maybe. <laughs> well, <Yeah. laughs> different thoughts. <Yeah>. Anyway, <laughs> here we go. You wouldn't be alive, no. Yeah, all right. <laughs> that, right? Okay. okay. All right, here we go. Um, got another one here. Um, change leads to progression, mm -hmm. right? Um, that we do know at the end of the day. You look at animals every day. You look at insects. You look at just life in itself. It leads mm. to progression. So why would you want to block that anyway? Right? Yeah. Now, here's something that we should do about it. Get a few steps. I always talk about listing. I always talk about listing, writing things down because it's important to when you actually see it. So what I'll say is this, break it down. Write down a list of the things you feel you need to change, at least 10 of them, mm -hmm. right? Areas in life, might be your finances, might be the way you spend, might be the way you save, might be your relationship, might be with your partner, could be anything, right? Write them down, right? Then look at them and see the most crucial ones in there. Priority, prioritize them, right? Get about three of them out. Just work on those, those mm. three only, right? The most important ones and start to work on those changes bit by bit each day. See if it doesn't actually bloom into something a lot better for you. Mm -hmm. You know, change is really important and we've got to learn to embrace it. If we're not embracing it, it's either we fear it. If we're fearing it, we've got to think, well, what do we fear? What's the worst thing that can happen? Yeah, what is the worst thing saying? So overall, change is good. Yeah, I mean, obviously it's the, it's the it's the fear of failure, isn't it? Because there is. there is always that risk that you will try to, to do something, it doesn't work out. Mm. Or, but at the end of the day, if you want to, to progress in life, you, you need to take that risk. You but do. it's just to make sure that you, when, if you are going to change something in your business or even in your, your personal life, make sure you think of the consequences and make sure you've done your planning right and that you know, you've researched stuff That's and it. you've spoken to the right That's people. It. I think sometimes people fail because they, they make these changes without really knowing Properly, what, what to do. the outcome, what the possible outcomes can mm -hmm. be, and you know how to get the right help that they need. Yeah. that's where it starts to go wrong. But if you prepare yourself well, then you'll probably be successful. Yeah, very much so. I always think about when somebody gets up and leaves and goes to another country. Mm -hmm. um, same thing, not knowing exactly yeah. what they're going to do, find a way. Yeah. Build bricks bit mm. by bit, but next minute they've got to mention instead. Yeah. We've got yeah. no excuse now nowadays with the internet and stuff. There's so well, much research we can exactly. do and finding out. Exactly. And, there's lots more help yeah. nowadays than it was before. Yeah, Chris, so. thank you so much. Pleasure, Chrissy. All right, and if people want more information about you, where do they go? They can go to W. Get my teeth in. Let me get my teeth in. Right? <laughs> they can go to W. They can go to www.coachchrisbrown.com or can email me on chris at coachchrisbrown.com. It's thank on you. the screen, guys. You can get yeah. it from there, okay? All right, see you after this. Don't forget to subscribe to The Chrissy B Show, always aiming to show you the happier side of life. You can find us on YouTube, Facebook and Twitter. Welcome back everyone. I'm going to be speaking to our next guest wine solo in just a moment. But before that, we were speaking about change with Chris Brown earlier. So let's take a look at this video of how our homes have changed over time in a visit to the Jeffrey Museum of the Home. We're well into the new year. And like everybody else, you've probably made plans and are looking forward to the future. No matter what time of the year, it is always useful to reflect. 
we went to the Jeffrey Museum of the Home to have a quick look at how our homes have changed over the last century. This room may look quite familiar. It's the most recent room in the museum and it's based on a loft conversion from 1998. The bedroom is located in the mezzanine, which is typical of loft conversions. So here we are in the 1960s. It's what we would now call retro. All the furniture is Scandinavian. The living area had to accommodate activities like homework, watching TV, eating and entertaining. The telephone was also now normal to have in the home. Now we're in 1930. A lot of Londoners live in flats nowadays. They were much smaller in comparison to the houses, but they were fully equipped with constant hot water, central heating and all the late latest electrical appliances. This room is based on the living area of a semi-detached house in North London from 1910. You might have noticed it's looking rather green with overtones of brown, which is very common to have two colour themes within a room. As you can see, there's not a lot in here, as decoration was minimal. Electricity was also new at this point in time, and one of my personal favourites is the pink lampshade. The further back you go in time, the more dramatic the difference is. In the 1870s, the rooms became more dramatic, more stylized and thought through. There was no more electricity, so playing instruments such as the piano, or painting with watercolors, playing board games such as chess, were as normal as watching TV on a tablet is today. Thank you very much. So now it's time to talk to Wine Solo. Hello, Hi, my love. How are you? I'm very well. How are you? I'm great. Do you want to tell the viewers what you do, first of all? I am a recording artist. I sing, I songwrite. Mm -hmm. Okay. do a bit of everything. You live in the dream? I am. Now. Mm -hmm. Now. I really am. And it's just so exciting to be getting up every day and my office is a place I want to be. Do you know what I it mean? It makes a difference, doesn't it? It makes it so yeah. much easier just working, doing what you love day mm. in and day out. It makes yeah. it so much easier. But things weren't always like this for you, was it, were they? No. What, 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 some, some, tell us some of the difficulties that you went through along the way. Oh, wow. Um, a lot. <laughs> without, you know, I never want to be the woe is me character because mm. I know we all go through hard times, but um, I grew up with my mum, um, it was just me, my mum and my brothers. Mm -hmm. um, and that was something that you, it took a while for me to understand. I was young yeah. and I was trying to, you know, comprehend why my, my, my dad wasn't around. Mm -hmm. How, you know, I'd go to my friend's house and I'd see their mum and dad, oh, you're right, Tamara, darling, and that yeah. wasn't in my house. But fortunately, I've always said my mum's got an invisible S on her chest, so I never felt like I missed out on anything. Mm. And I was still able to pursue what I wanted to and live my dreams because I had that support system. Mm. Do you know what I mean? So, so your mum was very strong for you? And, she yeah. was very strong and it was crazy because as I got a little bit older, maybe like 11, 12, my mum wasn't very well. Um, I mean, by the grace of God, she didn't have an illness where she was just like completely, you know, wiped out, couldn't mm. do anything. It was a hit and miss situation where she had really bad periods mm -hmm. um, and other days she'd be fine. Okay. Um, yeah. So how did you cope with that as a daughter? It's sad. It's your mum. Do you know what I mean? Because, you know, it doesn't matter if you're 10, 20 or 50. Your mum is superhero. Mm. She's a superhero. Yeah. So to see when she couldn't get out of bed and she was unable to move on, you know, she couldn't move on her own and she wasn't able to do things. It's not a nice thing to see, but it's one of those things. I've always been a bit older than my age. Okay, I'd never let her sure. see that I was sad or, mm -hmm. do you know what I mean? Oh, that was nice. I just wanted to make sure she knew, like, I've got you, you'll be fine, yeah, yeah. let's do this, me and you against the world okay. sort of well, thing. She seems so. great today, she seems in good health. Oh, she's, <laughs> she had to be. Yeah, <laughs> no, yeah. She's been doing really good, she's doing much better and I think she's, um, I think now she just knows, like, it's okay to be, see I'm a big girl now. Mm. You know, in right. my mum's eyes, she still sees little tea with the braids and running around but I'm like I'm 26 now yeah. I've got you it's okay so she right. she's doing good 
Now, Wine, you also experienced some bullying, didn't you? Can you tell us about that? I did, I did. I, um, I grew up in Yorkshire in Leeds and I went to a school that was mainly white children. I was the only black child. So it was, um, it's very interesting because, you know, at that, now when I look back on it, I know that children, they hear things and, mm -hmm. you know, but it was a situation of, okay, this hurts me and it's not stopping. But yeah. I almost felt at one point, I have to accept it because I'm outnumbered. Mm -hmm. And then I was just like, well, no, I don't. And I'm, I'm going to be here for a long time. I've got to get through primary school, through secondary school. Mm -hmm. So it was either I'm going to be a sheep, I'm going to be a shepherd. Do you know what I mean? And you became a shepherd. <laughs> <laughs> now, she was telling me, we were talking earlier, actually, had a quick chat, didn't we, before? And I really like the way you, you kind of turn things around because you kind of like really put yourself out instead of like shying away, which is what a lot of people do when they're maybe bullied or, you know, they, they, they're standing out for some reason. You didn't shy away. You actually went out and you became popular, actually, because, you know, you started teaching the, some of the girls how to sing and yeah. stuff like that. So you, you that, turn things around. Do you know what? I think to myself, you can always flip things mm -hmm. to a positive. Nothing has to stay negative if you don't want it to be that way. Mm -hmm. And I just thought, OK, I'm here now. I'm going to own it. Luckily, I had a growth spurt, so none of the boys wanted to mess with me anymore because I was like 10 years old and 20 foot tall, do you know what I mean? But um, yeah, I, I love to sing, I love to mm -hmm. dance. I was doing little bits and bobs within the community, so yeah. that was kind of my way to say, look, I'm here, I'm not an alien, I know I'm different, and yeah. when you're young, it's something to adjust to. Yeah. Because it wasn't just my school, it was my area. I was in like a predominantly white area so I understood it was new to them mm -hmm. but I was like I'm a cool person yeah, get to I'll teach me. you yeah. to dance yeah, yeah. do you know what I mean and in the end I mean now I go to Leeds and it's oh, all open arms and it's love and mm -hmm. that's all something of the past but I just think that the saying is so true what doesn't kill you makes you stronger because exactly. here I am now mm -hmm. and I've, I've never been happier brilliant <laughs> now you've also worked with some quite big names haven't you mm. tell us about that um, over the last few years, I've um, been on tour doing backing vocals for Eliza Doolittle, which mm -hmm. was amazing. Met so many people while we was out on the road. Um, I did a bit of songwriting for Alexandra Burke, mm -hmm. sang back up for the Scissor Sisters, and yeah. yeah, I've just, I've loved it. I've really... You have loved that, but also you want to do your own, your own thing I do, now, yeah. I do. And you know what? I'm not an ungrateful person in any way because I learnt from these people. These mm -hmm. people have been doing this professionally for so long. Mm -hmm. And along the way, like I said, I've been in the same venue as Jennifer Lopez and Nile Rogers. So being able to gain knowledge from these legends now, I'm mm -hmm. saying I'm ready to be solo. I'm ready to be Y and solo. Yeah. But I have all this knowledge that I would have never have had if I wasn't in the situation that I was, mm -hmm. working with all these other yeah, people. So yeah. I just take it all as such a blessing and I think everything happens within its time. Oh, and what keeps you positive? I think the way things have turned out for me, when I was younger, I was diagnosed with brittle asthma. Mm -hmm. So I was in and out of hospital, always in intensive care. Wow, really? Like the ambulance people knew my name when they got, oh, you're oh. right, tomorrow, like, that's terrible. Yeah. So for consultants and doctors to tell my mum, we're not sure if your daughter's going to be able to do sports, she shouldn't be dancing, and mm. I'm 26 years old. Do you know what I mean? Put me on a stage, that's where I am, I'm killing it. Mm -hmm. And for me, I'm doing what I'm meant to be doing. What have I got to be unhappy and negative about? Mm -hmm. Do you get what I mean? Because yeah, yeah, not a lot of people can say that. Mm -hmm. And I've got an amazing family. I'm, I've got a great support system. Which is great. You I can't the complain. Side. Now, we're going to go in just a second. We've got about 30 seconds left. Would you, could you give us a few notes? Oh, God. <laughs> Talk about put me on the spot. <laughs> All right, let, let's take a few sips of water. I just need to hear your voice. <laughs> um, I'll sing a little bit of Missing You. Yeah, go on then. I'm still here missing you. Don't want to be missing you. It's driving me insane. I'm missing your smell, your touch, your everything, everything, baby.
Great voice, thank you. <laughs> so we're going to end it on that note, everybody. Thank you so much for sharing thank your story you. with us and all the best with everything you're doing. Thank you so Brilliant. much for thank having you. me. All right, guys, so we have reached the end of today's programme. But if you want any information about our guests today, you can visit the website christybshow.tv and see all the, the other lovely content we have on there. And also, if you'd like to email me, you can do so on chris at christybshow.tv. So if you have a success story you'd like to share or you're going through a bit of a hard time and you'd like to maybe for us to cover a topic on this show that will help you and maybe other viewers that are going through the similar, similar problems, please do email me chris at chrissybshow.tv. Have a wonderful day and bye-bye for now. Which camera am I looking? This one over here. Okay, no, this one. This one? Okay, I don't... Oh, stupid cow. I really messed that one up. <laughs> I didn't know either. It's down there. I don't it know looks if I'm like looking you're at looking the right. Should I go here? Middle camera first. Middle? <laughs> but it's pointing downwards. I'm sorry. <laughs>